Adventures. Season three. You guys have already started filming, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So what can we uh, what can you share about it? Probably not much, but other than you know, there's a boat. There is a boat. Unlike any boat you've ever seen, especially on the inside. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a lot of fairies. Okay. They're not going away. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good news for us, bad news for Mark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, we sort of killed magic a little bit. Um, the magical creatures are as they were at the end of season two. Right. So we can say that there are some pretty incredible creatures in season three that we had the pleasure of designing with our amazing team. Um, we were just so happy with their work on the White Lady last year. Yeah. I mean, we put her on the poster. She was so beautiful. Um, so we thought maybe we might want to meet one of her siblings. So we do that right <laughs> now, and that's exciting. Yeah. So your show has a huge social media presence. What is it like being a creator in this weird age where you have so much access and like instant feedback? I'm just surprised I don't have more followers. <laughs> like my son, look at my Twitter feed. He's like. Pathetic, because my friend Ethan has more followers than you. He's ten. Um, yeah, it is strange. It is strange. I, I think, I, think I must, I must constantly be offending like a huge number of like the fans. Um, you know, it's it's really gratifying. You you can I really have gone from being kind of cranky old guy like oh well, Twitter well, tweeting what's that to, like I'm on I'm live tweeting or I'm in the hospital. I mean, I, I don't miss it. And I, and I like reading it more than I like writing it. And it's just really fun. It's, and, and for me, it's really new to have something that is happening in real time. And those tweets and those reactions have an effect on the show down the line. The things that are liked, you know, we're not totally stupid. It's like everybody like da da da. Let's do a little more though. You know, that's fun. That's oh my god, you're putting the grenade in their hand. <laughs> but they're also but there are also instances where you learn, you know, when an audience really wants something, don't give it to them. That's true too. Yeah. You know make it mean. attractive, make it exactly. really wonderful and then just slightly take it away. Be a little withholding. So, uh, the magicians killed magic, like you said. Yes. How long can that feasibly go on, and what creative ways can you tease to get around the lack of magic at first? Can I, can I, because can I, you wrote this line and I loved it. There is a character who says that a quest will solve this problem. And the character, or one of our characters says, well, how long is the quest? He goes, oh, about a season. <laughs> 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 I mean, but as we know, it's not completely dead, right? Julia has magic. Right. That's a mystery that we get into right and at the beginning. Magical creatures, the fairies have magic. Yeah. I mean, vampires are still vampires for yeah. whatever good that does. Anything. Dragons. Dragons, <laughs> yeah. So Quentin just needs to rely on other sources. Right. I, I mean, we get into that right away, really, about how wouldn't it be grand if we could work with magical creatures, but all we've been doing for millennia is pissing them off. They have no interest in helping not only just humans, but they are especially anti-magician. So it's, a, it's an extra bad situation, but at the same time, there's enough magical stuff in the show that the show still looks and feels really cool every week. I mean, it would be a bummer to make a show called The Magicians and not have any access to magic. Well, that, just there's something to really character. cool about that. Like, like that show, that show on Sundance would kill. Yeah, like, they get like eight really devoted it's fans. It's really in that insane asylum every right. <laughs> But yeah, good for us, bad for our characters. That's what we like. Okay, so last year I remember in the panel there was a discussion, and I hopefully this won't bring up too many unpleasant memories, where there was discussion about the Taylor Swift Song. What is unpleasant about Taylor Swift? Nothing, but there was a discussion about, she is, she is about right. the royalty fee, shall we say. Oh, yeah, and so I'm curious about how the music selection for season three, basically with a boat, uh, does this change about uh, some of the artists you're looking at? You know, Jimmy Buffett? Or? I feel that my relationship with sci fi and the studio is so good today after that shout out yeah. that I can revert to my real self. It ain't my money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I care because I'm a you know I'm trying to be responsible, but when I get the bill and it's like six figures, I'm like it's not going on my Mastercard. <laughs> I mean, the, tru the real truth of making a TV show is it's sort of like when you keep a budget in your life, yes, right? Sadly, you think, sadly it is. You think it's a hundred dollars a month 
for X and then something breaks down in your car and then your car costs $800 that month, right. you just take it out of somewhere else right. over the course of your paycheck, right? right? I mean, that's pretty much what we do over the course of the season. If we must spend $50,000 on Taylor Swift, and we must, right? <laughs> right? Then we will find the money somewhere else. I mean, that's when you hear, oh, that guy's a line producer or that woman is a line producer, that's the magic that they do. They um, switch money around into little corners and they make sure that you have enough to do the stuff that you want. And by the way, Lady Miz was a lot more expensive. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Way more. Wow. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys.